Artificial intelligence is a buzzword that is impossible to avoid nowadays. Everywhere we can read how AI affects our lives, for good or for bad, now and in the future. And indeed, we make use of AI in many places, when we plan travels, shop online, use bank services or communicate via video or audio. Healthcare is one area in which AI has held promise for many decades. However, its uptake in this area is slow, much slower than in other areas. Why is this? And what can we do about it? My name is Mark van Gils. I started as professor in digital healthcare at the Faculty of Medicine and Health Technology in January 2021. This professorship is in close cooperation with the EPANET network at the University Consortium of Seineyoki and co-funded by several instances in South Ostrobotnia. My career has been on the crossings of technical sciences and healthcare since the 1990s. During that time, in my PhD research at Eindhoven University of Technology in the Netherlands, I studied how AI could be useful to help in patient monitoring during anesthesia. Since then, after moving to Finland, I have been active in a large variety of research projects, working at VTT, the Technical Research Center of Finland, together with companies, hospitals, patients, and many other universities. The theme has always been how to use all the data that we nowadays have to actually improve healthcare. This is a complex question and a question that I continue to work on. Thanks to advances in sciences, technology and many other factors, our life expectancy is increasing. This is a great thing. However, as we get older, also the risk of developing diseases increases. And the majority of people over 70 years old have two or more diseases, and most of these are chronic, such as heart disease, diabetes, dementia, meaning that they last long and thus are costly and decrease the quality of our lives. On the other side of the equation, our healthcare resources to deal with these cases are not able to keep up with this growth and are increasingly under stress. Something needs to be done. Could AI help? AI may help where decisions are to be made, and we then call it decision support. And there are plenty of decisions to be made in healthcare. Think of a neurologist who needs to make a diagnosis of a patient with unclear complaints about memory loss, or a clinician who needs to decide on whether it is safe to carry out an operation on a person who just arrived in the emergency care after a car accident or a primary care physician who needs to decide whether a patient should be referred to a specialist, or a radiologist who needs to interpret a medical image, a nurse who follows the patient's state in the ward, but also a middle-aged healthy man who wants to stay healthy, a person identified with risk of type 2 diabetes wanting to lessen risk factors, or an elderly person's children who want to follow remotely if everything is okay, and also hospital management who wants to schedule staff efficiently, or finally, policymakers considering potential effects of planned legislations. So, there are plenty of opportunities to use AI-based methods, and indeed there are many encouraging examples. Think for example of chatbots, or medical image analysis, speech recognition, natural language processing, and technologies such as wearables and telemedicine that use a lot of advanced information processing. Many of these tasks are so-called narrow AI, cases where the task at hand is relatively simple. Extract information from an image, analyze one sentence of text. But if we go to more difficult tasks, such as making a complex diagnosis or planning a treatment for a patient, or assigning the right resources in a hospital, things become quickly much more difficult, and we find less AI-based success stories. In general, AI uptake lags behind that in other fields. There are at least three reasons for this. AI methods need lots of data to learn from. They need targets, right answers, connected to this data to learn what kind of right output is associated with what data. For example, a picture of a cat. The input data is the image itself, the target is the word cat. Finally, the methods need to run in some environment, on a certain computer, or a phone, or in a smartwatch interacting with the users and other parts of the world. Transferring the problem to healthcare sounds simple. The data is the patient data, targets are example diagnoses we have from earlier cases, and the environment is the hospital or home with different users. However, healthcare-specific data is often fraught with noise, artifacts, inconsistencies, and problems with non-standardization. 
This makes getting sufficient good quality data for AI development often a major underestimated effort. Healthcare specific targets to use for AI training, often there is not a simple correct answer to provide the AI algorithm with during the development. We may not know the patient outcome or underlying disease until many years later. Annotations are scarce, there may be no gold standard to classify the patient state. And healthcare expert A may have a different opinion than healthcare expert B. Furthermore, we are all different. What may be good treatment for one person might not be the right for one another person. Finally, healthcare environment, the uptake of the decision support system in actual routine use requires adapting and adhering to a plethora of non-technical requirements and assumptions. Established processes, existing attitudes and culture that take time to adapt and regulatory, ethical and privacy considerations all play a role. Efforts needed to address these successfully are often grossly underestimated as they require a truly multidisciplinary commitment. We can act upon addressing these three challenges. Develop methods that are robust against poor data, but realize that noise itself can contain information about what is happening around you. This is especially the case when we, more and more, measure during daily living where the conditions are varying a lot. We develop methods that deal especially with poor signal quality data to understand hidden messages in daily living data. And we can integrate different data sources. We don't normally make a decision on our health on only our heart rate or only blood pressure. We take also into account our history, how things are going at work or at home maybe the presence of other diseases, or whether our parents had certain diseases. All of this information is valuable and needs to be taken into account when thinking about complex decisions. Using this information in an explainable way to come to a decision is important. Furthermore, major efforts are dedicated to crucial issues such as dealing with explainability of AI methods, which will improve trust in suggestions that AI-based methods give. In the end, it is important to prove that our new technology has some actual effect on the outside world and is not some, just some nice gimmick. We need to prove that it has impact before investing in it. Does it save lives or improve the quality of lives? Or does it reduce the risk of getting a heart attack? Does it save costs to a hospital? Or does it help to relieve the workload of hospital staff? Figuring this out is what we call impact assessment, and one branch in which much work is to be done, both from a technical as well as a societal, medical and economical viewpoint. If we can measure impact and use it in AI method development, we can use it to develop decision support systems that are truly more effective. All the work steps above require tight interacting with researchers, healthcare professionals, patients and other citizens medical device providers, pharmacy, regulatory bodies, and many others. From the very start, that is why all the work we do is, from the earliest planning phase onwards, done together in consortia, where all relevant people are present. Communicating and understanding each other's wishes and worries is essential. Summarizing. The healthcare domain and AI form a combination with incredible potential. Obtaining data, setting goals and assessing utility are complex. And the environment in which the methods are to be used often even more so. One conclusion from this is then that also that there is no quick returns on AI and healthcare projects. Investments need to be done for the long run. And it has to be accepted that return on investment may become apparent only after many years. A requirement is the need for cooperation. Researchers, patients, professionals, industry, policymakers, regulatory bodies all need to be taken aboard from the very beginning to have hope of actual success. What is important in the end is actual impact generated by a new AI-based approach, whether it is patient turnover, euros per patient per year, patient satisfaction with the healthcare services, department budget use, or patient quality of life. Quantifying impact efficiently and using it as a target to help improve processes and services, whether they are AI-based or not, is a crucial need to fulfill. 
This is recognized widely in the community as exemplified in research initiatives at universities. Combining these actions, doing smart data processing, defining impactful goals, and involving all stakeholders from the start, we do have the keys in our hands to realize the huge potential that AI brings in the healthcare setting. I thank you for your attention.